Hello friends, this is Parag here, your host on Stay Strong Podcast. Thank you very much for joining this podcast. It's my promise to bring you the world-class information in the field of kettlebell, scalable sport and strength and conditioning. Today we have Dell from Michigan. Dell is a professional engineer working in a Ford Motor Company in Michigan. He started his kettlebell journey at the age of 50. Today he's 62. He is lifting kettlebells for 12 years. Until 50, he was pretty much regular with the exercise, which is going to the gym and walking. But he explored kettlebells as a strength and conditioning tool initially, and then discovered kettlebell sport by himself. He went and checked out one of the competitions, and that is where he actually got a little intrigue about kettlebell sport. And he slowly started researching about kettlebell sport, and he himself prepared and got into the competition where he met Coach Ken and then it was no looking back for him. He has done some immense lifting like double 24 with or 72 reps, which is a great number at his age. We are going to actually see his training program, his nutrition. He trains six times a week. So we are going to see how does he recover and what is the nutrition program, what is the training program looks like at his age so that we can learn a lot of things from such masterclass which I'm trying to bring you uh, via having such kind of podcast. So guys, please help me welcome Dale from US. Yeah, hello friends, welcome back to Stay Strong Podcast. We have Dell from Michigan, US. It's uh, quite exciting for me to share uh, Dell's journey in this podcast. Over to you, Dell. Please introduce yourself, your professional background, and how did you get into kettlebell sport? Yeah, so my name is Dale Wall. I'm an engineer at Ford Motor Company. I live in Michigan in the U.S. And my journey into kettlebells, well, training with kettlebells started about 12 years ago. My wife's uh, kickboxing uh, trainer opened up a gym, um, an MMA gym, but he also had strength and conditioning classes. It's okay. uh, so Victorious MMA um, Strength and Conditioning is the name of the gym. Okay. And when he opened that up, I started doing the strength and conditioning with him and his main tool for strength and conditioning is kettlebell. So yes. That's when I first started lifting kettlebells and then probably about eight years ago, I was just scrolling online at um, kettlebell sites and saw that there was going a kettlebell sport competition in Jackson, Michigan, which is not too far from me. So I thought, I'll go and watch it and uh, as I'm watching, talking to some people, I'm thinking, this looks like something I could do. So I started researching, found the next one that was fairly close to me and signed up for it and trained myself. I didn't know anyone in the sport, didn't know anyone to really even get advice from other than looking online, but trained myself to do a 10 minute snatch set with 16 kilogram uh, kettlebells and got a first place and have been hooked ever since. Wow, that's great. So, yeah, great. So uh, did someone introduce kettlebell sport to you or do you yourself uh, explore it? Just, ex just found it online. Um, okay, okay. okay. Explored it myself. So, so your journey basically started with strength and conditioning classes, and uh, then you wanted to dig dig in more information about kettlebells, and that is how you get uh, the information about kettlebell sport, right? Yes. Oh, great, great. So, uh, when you started your journey, did you find a coach, or are you still training by yourself? No, eventually I did uh, start working with Ken Blackburn, okay. um, AFF. Okay. And Ken does uh, programming for my kettlebell training. I he's well 
30 miles from me. And so okay. low, about 45 minute drive for me to go see him. So I did go work out with the cat about once a month and okay. me with technique and also a lot of general uh, okay. fitness stuff. So. Wow, wow, wow. So it's been 10 years you're lifting kettlebells, right? Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Wow, that's great. Now, uh, when you started lifting kettlebells, uh, what is the main change have you seen in yourself, the transition that is either is a, it's a, of course, it will be a physical change, but apart from the physical change, what is the, what is the change you have seen that when you adapted kettlebell sports, this change happened to you? Oh, biggest change before I start uh, training with kettlebells, I, I ran a lot. Okay. And just basically going to the gym and lifting on the machines by myself. So I felt like I was fit. Okay. I looked, okay. looked like I was fit. Okay. But it's it's a huge change since training with kettlebells. I'm, I've realized I wasn't as fit as I thought. I am in, I was probably, I would have been 50, about 50 years old when I started work training okay. with kettlebells. Okay. And okay. Since doing so, I <clears throat> probably, you know. Okay. The fittest I've ever been, the strongest I've been, um, mobility-wise, my flexibility, mobility, everything has increased. So, wow. and a lot of it's, you know, I do a lot more other exercises along with my kettlebell training, but it's okay. just my whole workout routine is completely different than what it was before I got into kettlebells. So. Okay, okay. So uh, you mentioned that you are working with Ford Motor Company. That means now you are, uh, are you into a desk job or do you move around? A desk job. Okay, so uh, we encounter a lot of people who typically working into an IT company and uh, want to get into any kind of fitness activity. So what is your recommendation or suggestion uh, based on your experience because you uh, started lifting kettlebells at the age of 50 now uh, you're 62 correct me if i'm wrong so it's been 12 years you're lifting kettlebells so uh, how is it helping you in your work if you can just uh, uh, throw a little highlight on it how it has helped in your work how the kettlebell sport and lifting kettlebells has helped you in your work Oh, you know, realistically, I, I can definitely, I mean, I don't get as sore and stiff when I'm sitting at the desk all day. I, I'm actually more alert. Part of it is because I focus on getting more sleep now. I, okay. My general patterns have changed enough. I'm more alert. Like I said, I, just I can sit longer okay. where before I had to get up and stretch all the time where I still do get up and stretch, but I don't feel I have to. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's a, that's a really great thing because what happens is with the age, um, it becomes very difficult to move. And uh, at times, many people are not really aware that um, your body is meant to use and uh, we tend to really forget that art of doing strength training. When you actually age, you really require more of lifting weights with the right coaching guideline, which I guess you are doing correctly and you're really prospering in kettlebell sport, which is really when we really look forward for, you know, people especially who are above 50 and lifting kettlebells and how do they really manage their mind and body and progress in the sport. That's that's really great deal of a good deal um, about your journey. It's been 12 years. You're doing really great. Now, uh, wanted to understand like how does your workout pattern really looks like? Like, do you work out three times a week, four times a week, or do you simultaneously also do 
running any kind of a cardio activity or you're just depending on training with kettlebells and kettlebell sport? I, I work out six days a week. So I work three days on um, kettlebell sport training. Okay. And then I'll do three days uh, strength and conditioning. So sometimes uh, you know, maybe working with kettlebells, um, use a lot of lot of different base. I'm real big into working out with mace, um, Bulgarian bags. Yeah. Um, I do weather permitting because Michigan weather's not always great, but weather permitting, I do try to get in a three mile run before my workouts and okay. Um, a lot, a lot of floor work, core work that I never did before. So yeah. I never realized the importance of having a strong core. Um, yes. And my, you know, nine kettlebell um, sport training days, I also have start start doing a lot more uh, barbell work. Um, also, uh, okay. Down than squats, um, anything really to build you know, my legs for having more explosion. Yes. Or um, getting the kettlebells up, whether it be snatch or a lawn cycle. Okay, okay, okay. So what is your favorite lift? Like you do long cycle mostly or do you do snatch? Because I guess you mentioned that uh, you started with the snatch when you didn't have any exposure. So are you still continuing to do snatch or have you shifted to long cycle? I shifted to long cycle um, and let's see, I've been doing kettlebell sport now for seven years. Yes. And the first uh, first competition was snatch, but then once I realized what long cycle was, I'd never heard of long cycle before. Okay. Once I realized what it was and I gave it a try, I pretty much became for competition strictly long cycle. Um, that okay. came up one until just recently, well, until I turned uh, 60. Okay. And once I turned 60, I was for international competition for world championships. I am now lifting 16 kilogram bells instead of 24 kilogram bells. Now I'm doing all three. I'm doing by the long, long, long cycle way. and snatch and jerk. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Great. So, so in, uh, I did compete in all three. Okay. 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 Yeah. Your training uh, really looks intense because you mentioned that you're training for six days. That means you just rest one day. So how do you deal with the recovery? So in that sense is like, uh, do you really recover well? Do you have any kind of a set nutrition program? Uh, which can or probably someone else you have recommended to you or do you follow uh, regular nutrition what you have do you have any kind of supplementation if you can just uh, have a little exposure to that sector that area now the um, the nutritional part I really need to get better at um, that's probably my biggest weakness I I watch what I eat but I don't really follow a plan at all, so okay. that we get better at. Um, as far as supplements, occasionally I uh, will do uh, protein shakes. Okay. Um, not I'm not diehard. You know, I have to have my protein shake every day. It has to be a certain way, but I do the the occasional protein shakes, and you know competitions I will take protein bars that's about it I don't I don't do much else for supplements other than I do get a vitamin drip uh, IV drip about once a month just for 
yeah, general health. Yes. Yeah. So. Okay. Okay. So, uh, are you vegetarian or non-vegetarian? Like, uh, do you eat non-veg, chicken or fish? I, I eat every kind of meat you can imagine. I'm non-vegetarian, so. <laughs> okay. I, okay. I like my protein, but I do try to. I don't eat a lot of red meat. I love red meat, but I try to focus more on, you know. Sticking with chicken, fish, uh, pork. So. Okay, okay, okay. So before 50, uh, when you started lifting weights or when you actually got exposed to kettlebell sport, were you in any kind of sport in the sense like, did you do exercise earlier, like so cycling, running on a regular basis? When I say regular basis is like three or four times a week, any kind of exercise until you were 50. Yes, uh, well, most of my adult life, I've always have had gym memberships. Um, it was fairly steady at going and lifting, nothing serious. Never wanted to become huge uh, lifter, bulky or anything like that. Okay. Just uh, general to try to stay fit and um, some cycling and probably mostly running okay i did uh five k's on a regular basis for a long time and then start getting into doing uh, the occasional 10 k's and then half marathons and when i turned 50 that is when i decided to do my first full marathon Okay. I've, I've done two um, full marathons and then when I actually when I got into kettlebell sport is when I um, quit doing I, I've still done a couple half marathons I quit doing the full marathons just because the training was too intense on my legs yes. and okay. left me for kettlebell sport okay 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 got it so you've been pretty much regular with the trainings um i mean all your life right right from your childhood days up to your college and then even post college when you get, start working still you're being pretty regular to do the exercise has yeah. that helped you in kelvin sport that's my question to you in yeah. a ways, in a ways, like at times uh, we land up some injury, we have some kind of injury. So how how was the transition? In the sense, like if you're doing bodybuilding type of exercises, um, were you very stiff? What what programs did you change when you actually moved from your regular training programs to kettlebell sport? Uh, did you work more on flexibility or did you work more on endurance? What change did you make? Uh, a lot the, the endurance is, was probably the toughest part um okay so even even though i ran the endurance for a 10 minute set in kettlebell sport is completely different um because you're doing both strength and cardio um yes and especially when you get into those 24 kilogram bells and heavier it can be a lot um, yes yes a 50 year old but uh, <laughs> yes i can imagine yes okay so so yeah I, I mean it took a while i when i'm riding the bike instead of you know just trying to keep a, a consistent you know steady pace okay i'm having to do a lot more uh hard um, running or pedaling and you know get the heart rate up more while riding the bike i think that's probably the biggest thing is getting that heart rate up and doing exercise exercises to keep it elevated okay but okay where before it was used to you know moderate heart rate steady pace and 
never, never really maxing out my heart rate and keeping it there for a long time. Okay. And that's the biggest thing for a uh, kind of sport that you need to be able to do. Okay. 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 Wow. So have you got any negative experience of uh, kettlebell sport? Uh, maybe uh, injury or something else, uh, any kind of negative if you have. Yeah, I ended up uh, having shoulder problems, my left shoulder. And I was going to see a uh, soft tissue uh, specialist having her work on my shoulder on a regular basis. Okay. Every two weeks, pretty much. I mean, okay. my traps were solid rock. Um, <laughs> there was a lot of stiffness. Yeah, she was doing dry needling, cupping, um, massaging, everything just to loosen it up and make it feel good so okay. that I could get a mess it up again and go see her and they never regular basis and she finally convinced me to go get x-rays done okay um this was 2020 so okay. over the year there wasn't much going on anyways and i had done a cup um a competition where i did both i was going to do both long cycle and biathlon Okay. Long cycle well, but I had nothing left in my left shoulder for biathlon. And that's why I went and got some x rays done. And they did find a couple slight tears, nothing that required surgery, but I had to take about six months off, four months of physical therapy. Okay. Learning to lift um, properly using okay. more. The smaller muscles rather than just the delts and the main, you know, larger muscles. So learning how to lift um, properly using my entire body and um, I think I said four months of physical therapy, then coming back, starting my first comp going back down to 16 kilogram bells and working my way back up to the 24s again. Okay. okay. So, and also during that time, because I wasn't supposed, that six months, I wasn't supposed to be doing any overhead lifting on my own. Okay. So I started doing more running and sprinting um, as part of my conditioning. Okay. And proceeded to strain a hamstring doing that. So, okay. So that slowed me down completely. I have now also seen someone uh, on a, about once a month, um, a stretch uh, massage therapist. And he spends, you know, 30 minutes, about once a month, um, stretching the hips, massaging my hamstrings, uh, just glutes, everything to loosen my legs and keep the flexibility in my legs. And it's been a huge uh, help. Okay, okay, okay. So um, this injury was because of the lifting, wrong technique, or it was because of overuse what it, what it oh. was sorry it was overuse i mean overuse. The, okay. the, the technique yeah so, i mean just like differences in my technique one i was keeping my uh, shoulders too tense in the overhead position Achha. okay okay and instead of once getting them up overhead relaxing them so I was keeping them tense, keeping my traps tight, everything too tight throughout my entire lift. Okay. And needed to learn to relax my relax. Yes. muscles more and it was a okay. big difference, especially okay. in that overhead position. 
okay 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 so how are things now i mean have you taken the rehabilitation and now you're uh, recovered much better recovered much better i've changed some of my uh workout um routine to where i'm doing more stretching and using uh doing some uh, stick mobility work on a regular basis for flexibility and mobility and doing a lot of uh body tempering which is rolling out with uh 110 pound uh, roller okay and they're I can roll out the my the front having someone roll out um, my back and my uh, hamstrings with the heavy rollers. So okay, okay. Wow. So that's helping your lifting. Oh yeah, it's helping. Well, it's, yeah, I'm keeping my body just in better shape. Okay, okay, okay. That's great. That's great. Wow. So, uh, like, uh, do you? Uh, no, like you, you had trained earlier uh, by yourself and now you're training with a coach. What is the main difference you see? Uh, because at times many people coach by themselves and they really take a big route to reach to where they really want to go. But with the coach, they can really go faster. What is your view on it? Yeah. Actually, training with the coach has become made my life a lot easier. Okay. Um, even my my strength and conditioning trainer has helped me out a lot. Um, Calbell coach, he works a lot with me on my technique, my programming, so I know what to work on for Calbell sport. Um, yeah strength and conditioning um, trainer has gotten real good at, you know, checking with me right after a cop and asking me, okay, what's the first thing that failed on you? Okay. What what kept you from getting one more rep? Was <laughs> it legs? Was it arm? Was it endurance? So that he would know, okay, this is what we need to focus on in exactly. general. Uh, strength and conditioning so yes. that's that's always I mean sometimes even before asking me what the results were that's his he wants to know what failed and that has been a huge help give me to focus on the right stuff yes yes but then both my trainer and my kettlebell sport uh, coach are big into recovery. Okay. Taking time off from um, resting the body, don't overdo it. At one time I was going to the gym, oh, I'd say usually about eight to nine times a week. I was, I would have, I've always taken Sundays off. Okay. A lot of times I was running on Sundays, but um, I would on um, two or three days a week I would be doing double workouts going in both the morning and the evening. Oh, and that's too much work. They're like, no, don't do that. You know, you're, you're going if you're going six days a week, that's still more than most people. So you're yes. doing fine, but. Now, if I'm tired, if I feel like I have, you know, something bothering me a little bit, I'm not afraid to take time off. They want me to, you know, take a day off, rest an extra day. Exactly. Um, when it comes time for competitions, I start, you know, my taper down. Usually, especially lot big competition if it's going to uh, worlds. Okay. Well, I will not be lifting kettlebells at all the week before the competition. A lot of people are 
you know, wanting to get to the gym as soon as they get to where they're going and get practice set in, I've been told, no, don't touch the kettlebells until it's time to lift. Okay. okay. So taking time off before the comp and then usually at least a week after the comp, um, my trainer won't even let me in, walk in the gym after I get back from a comp. He doesn't want to see me for at least a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some, sometimes more. And then once I get back in, he's going to beat the heck out of me. But <laughs> he wants, okay. wants to make sure I have time for recovery. And okay. Get a huge help. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. Wow, great. <clears throat> so what's the one thing uh, your coach expects from you when he's training to you? Oh, he's, I mean, his biggest thing, because he sends me my programming online, and when I fill that out, you know, initially I was just uh, filling out, okay, here's my reps, here's my heart rate, you know, given the results, and he's like, no, he goes, your results are always good. He goes, I'm not worried about that. Give me comments. Tell me how you feel. Tell me, you know, what's hard about it, what's easy about it. So he, he needs, he wants more feedback than just the results of, you know, am I able to do what he programmed for me? Okay. Interesting. Okay. Great, great, great. So uh, I would like to know your best uh, kettlebell sport lifting numbers in US as well as overseas. If you're doing marathon, maybe one or two marathon and probably 10 minute classic. If you can just give the best numbers in long cycle snatch or biathlon, whatever the best is there. Yeah, so I, I've done a couple half marathons, nothing nothing in competition, just in training sets. Gotcha. Okay. So not, not really there. Um, I've considered getting more into it, but I'm too busy with the classic 10 minute sets. So, but my best, and this would have been one, a world competition for 24 kilogram long cycle was 72 reps. Okay. So that was when? I believe that one may have been 2019 in Serbia. That's Ayukil? Huh? That was Ayukil? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'd have to double check that. I believe that's when that one was. But, uh, okay. And then, oh, for um, 16 kilograms since I've turned 60. My best uh, for long cycle was a 113 reps. Okay. That would have been at the Cali Open of this past, this year, so 2022. Okay. Yeah, that was. Dennis's uh, okay. competition in California. And then okay. in Portugal, I had, that would have been my best oh, for jerk, which I think that was 133 reps. Okay. And then my best for a snatch is 198 reps. Okay. And was it uh, double 16? That was 16. Okay. And that, that's the one that keeps haunting me because I I want to hit 200 on that one. And okay. That would, that, that I came close in Portugal. Um, my judge actually 
kind of slowed me down, so I must not have been fixating quick enough at the top because I had, I was in shape. I felt like I could have gotten more reps, but since she was slowing me down, I'm, I'm sure it was the fixation at the top that she was looking at. Okay. Yeah. So I will. That's an incredible number still at your age. It's amazing. Wow. Congratulations for that. Yes. Thank you. Great. So, yeah, it's been a great journey, Dil, and thank you very much. I would like you, if you can, um, uh, like give a message for the Indian lifters, especially the lifters who want to get into the sport above 50, as well as the lifters who are. Uh, experienced lifter, experienced lifter like me, who are into who are into twenties, who are into thirties, who are into forties. Maybe what message you want to give them? Well, I mean, important things are, are listen to your body. Take time off. Don't be afraid to take time off if you need it. Um, especially for recovery. Um, as you get older, the body needs a more more rest, recovery that you can get. It helps. Um, but other than that, have fun with it. If it's if it starts becoming work, if it's frustrating you, if you're not enjoying it, then there's, why are you doing it? Absolutely. First, have professionals, so always make sure you're having fun with it. Yes. Yes, yes. That's a, that's a great message. Yeah, great. Great, great, great. Thank you, Dale. Thank you very much for your time. It was really wonderful speaking to you. And I'm sure uh, viewers who are going to check this podcast out are going to learn a lot. I've learned a lot, especially the feedback part, which you mentioned that uh, you will always do good in your numbers. But the feedback, how do you feel, Dale, about the competition? Like, that part was really interesting, which I think it's kind of a takeaway from the podcast. Personally, I feel. Yeah. Yeah, great. 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 So I wish you good luck for your upcoming competition. Which is the next competition you're getting into? The next one I will be getting into will be uh, more than likely in January. It will be a local competition well not local for me but a um, small competition at a gym in missouri okay okay that's great yeah. great 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 so i wish you good luck and i'm looking forward for you our next wksf event in hungary all right that sounds nice okay great. Talking to you. yeah thank you very much bye-bye take care all right, thank you. Bye.